As a singer, Yolanda Adams is the pinnacle. There is no one who is more in demand from a, a gospel standpoint right now. There is no one who's more respected uh, as a vocalist in the business. Charismatic, beautiful, stoic, tall because of her beauty, because of her voice, she entraps you, she captivates you. I've worked with a lot of artists and I've never heard anybody sing like Yolanda sing. I just thought that I was going to be a reporter. I was gonna be the best reporter in the world and I was gonna live my life going from place to place to place, giving the scoop and the stories and it just didn't happen that way. I sang all my life from a little girl till now and this happened to be what God gave me to share with the world and I'm so grateful. I was uh, 13 years old when I joined the Southeast Inspirational Choir and it was under the direction of Shirley Joyner, Paul Preacher, and Brenda Waters. Thomas Whitfield was the person that really uh, put her on the scene with the Southeast Inspirational Choir. Growing up in that choir, it was a, it was a great lesson. I, I learned how to um, approach the mic. I learned uh, what audiences like and what they dislike. Um, and I also learned that early on I had this thing in my voice that made me different from other people. As time passed, we had an album that hit the Billboard charts really, really uh, hard and we were there in the top 10 and we were nominated for a Stellar Award and I was like, now this is when it's getting big. With the Stellar Awards, the year they started the uh, Hall of Fame, she was the first inductee. I know that it's, it's deeper than making more money for the record companies. It's deeper than just making an album so your name is out there. It's deeper than that. It goes to the heart of helping people. She has taken gospel music into arenas that most people, most gospel artists um, have not had the opportunity to go to. I never thought that it was taboo to blend gospel music with, uh, say, like a, a cool uh, drum line or a cool bass line because that has been the history of gospel music. Miss Adams, uh, she's able to do that, you know, with the gospel and the R&B because uh, she real. I think she come across real on stage and just regular people tend to feel that. Along with moving the mission forward, you have to understand that there will be harsh criticism especially from those people who don't understand why you do what you do. Now it's, you know, it's cool to be Yolanda Adams. Mm, six years ago, seven years ago, you know, eight years ago, when I was breaking that ground and changing the minds of people and the mindsets of people, some of them didn't understand. And then, you know, the truth is some of them still don't understand. And I don't sing for those people. I sing for people who are hurting. I sing for people who are lonely. I sing for people who really want to know that God exists. She wants to get her message across to everyone, not just those that are in the church, but those that would want, that want to cross over. It's a very unique entity when you have somebody who can blend R&B and gospel in that manner. Uh, she, she's accepted by the gospel audience. She's accepted by the hip hop audience. She's accepted by the, uh, the secular audience and everybody wants to work with her. Mountain High Valley Low was one of those life changing albums. I'm blessed to say that that was one of those albums that it took me to another level of awareness. Each song has a purpose. Each song has the destiny. Each song has a uh, sect of people that it's you know set to minister to. And I think you would describe her as a lady of purpose and destiny with her music. Open My Heart for me was the greatest because I got a chance to work with my buddies, Jimmy Jam, Terry Lewis, and Big Jim. Writing that song with, uh, with the fellas. We were in Minneapolis, my first time going to Minneapolis to work. After we did the first couple of takes, it was like, okay, we're done for the night because there wasn't a dry eye in the, in the room. When she sings, um, it will make you cry. She's very touching. I'm not just a gospel artist, I'm not just a mom, I'm not just, you know, a radio announcer, I'm a businesswoman. And there are challenges being African American, going into corporate America, going to, into industries where our faces are not the majority faces. I always focus on who can I touch today? How can I be 
God's hands, God's eyes, God's ears, and God's mouth today. opportunity to become a, a radio broadcaster was one of those things that um, kind of like popped in my lap. She's doing something that very few uh, recording artists have done successfully and that's uh, being able to, uh, to helm and host her own radio show. It's a nationally syndicated show. The show is absolutely hilarious. It's so much fun that people are like, did you hear that Yolanda Adams this morning? She is really crazy. Oh, I didn't even know she had a sense of humor. She could rip, she makes me laugh. Yolanda's a funny person. Yolanda loves to make people laugh. What is it like to work with Yolanda Adams? What is it like to work with a hurricane, a tornado? She's a one-stop shop, she does it all. It's a lot of fun. For me to be up, happy to be up at 3 a.m. getting ready to go to the studio, get into the studio between 4 and 4.15 in order to get on the air at 5 o'clock central. They, you, you gotta believe that there is something behind that. And I have never regretted that decision at all. All right, 28, 28 minutes past the hour. Of course, that was Kirk Franklin looking for ya. Well, you found me, here I am. I'm very, very, uh, grateful also to my mom and my dad and my entire family for helping all of the children embrace all types of music. There was music everywhere in our house. We listened to a lot of Stevie Wonder, you know, um, Shirley Caesar, um, James Cleveland. I, I know she has a lot of influences. I was able to um, take all of those musics and create a sound that was my sound. And I absolutely love the fact that my mom never said, you can't sing R&B, you can't sing this, you can't sing that. I chose to do what I'm doing, and it's a blessing. They're all very close, extremely close family. She is the oldest, I believe, of six. And, uh, you know, her mother and her grandmother uh, are still alive, and she's family first. What I love about my mom and my dad and my grandmother and grandfather is that they allowed all six of us to be as distinct and as different as we were. They loved us the same and they nurtured us to be thinkers, to be independent. Her father passed when she was 13 in a car accident and uh, because she's the oldest she kind of took on responsibility of trying to to make it okay for everybody else and so um, as a sister all her siblings would say that she's the best. Growing up with Yolanda was cool. She's a wonderful big sister. She took me on road trips and taught me the Bible. Um, I had the privilege of going to each concert with her and, you know, sitting behind stage and learning the business at a young age. Love is just love from my uh, siblings because I have, re I have great relationships with all of them and I get a chance to talk to all of them and no matter, I mean, from the, from the smallest, as I say, to the tallest. My daughter Taylor is my greatest accomplishment by far. Without her, the house doesn't mean anything, the car doesn't mean anything, the pool doesn't mean anything because I don't swim in it as much as I should. <laughs> Life is not, you know, as cool as it is. Uh, unless I'm sharing it with Taylor. Now that we're parents, we're doing the same things that our mo mother and our father did with us. Uh, we're teaching our kids to be independent, but we're teaching them to be loving, family-oriented, and I just believe that it works. Well, Yolanda is a wonderful mother to Taylor. I remember when um, she gave everybody the news about being pregnant, and um, we were all excited. Taylor's the best thing that ever happened to her. I've been working for Yolanda almost nine years, and I was there when Taylor was born, and Taylor has been with us ever since. I want Taylor to be the best Taylor that she could ever be. I want her to be the happiest person 
that she can ever be. If it means going into singing, I want her to do that. If it means being an actress, I want her to do that. If it means owning five restaurants, I want her to do that. I want her to do what makes her heart happy. She wants to make sure that she makes Taylor's life as loving and as wonderful as it possibly can be. As a mother, she makes sure that regardless of whatever's going on, her daughter has absolutely everything that she needs. The only thing that I hope my daughter does not have to face in her life and in her time, or any African American child, or any Hispanic child, or any Asian child, is racism or sexism. I hope that by that time, there will be more minority children uh, in college and more minority students in business. I hope that by that time we would have seen that we're all more alike than we all than we want to admit. There isn't a word for the type of mother she is. Tell her is her life. Being a mother means that there's someone else to love me other than God, other than my family, who looks up at me every night and says, I love you, mommy. Now that we know that it does take a village, a community, a world to shape a child, we're more conscious of that. And I believe the more conscious we become of these issues, the more we can do about them. She has a, a foundation called Voice of an Angel Foundation. And um, it helps the uh, youth in the city of Houston, well, all over the country. I'm very proud of my foundation. Uh, it is one of those foundations that goes beyond the call of duty. And we make sure that we better the lives of kids, not just from a charitable standpoint, but a mentorship standpoint. Yolanda Adams' charity work, it, it quietly is kept, fulfills the need in several different areas. If you work hard and you do uh, your part, you can get the same thing once you get out of college. You can do the same thing for yourself and you deserve it. We take young people in middle schools and high schools and we take them from middle school all the way through college, pay for their tuition, but what they owe us is they owe us three years in the education field. And once they do that, they, they'll understand the beauty of mentoring and pouring into the lives of young people. I'm concerned that um, the African-American community is growing, and when I say growing, we're growing wider as opposed to, you know, growing intellectually. So I've started this Witness Fitness Mix that, um, that causes us to work out at least 20 minutes a day. As you can see, when I was younger, uh, 12 and 13 years old, I couldn't just go into a store and get a pair of pants. I'd have to go to the um, cloth store, buy my denim, buy my uh, whatever, and make my own stuff because I was always adding to patterns because I was always long. Now that I can afford to uh, dress myself in the best designers and the latest fashions and stuff, I'm still finding that there are things that I can't just go into a store and buy. I wanted to create a line that would, would have the shape of, uh, African-American, Hispanic women, because we do have a lot of thigh, we do have a lot of hip, but do it in such a way that it's complimentary and it's classy. So I want to help that person who can't find uh, the right fit for them. in my life, a very untypical day. I am on my way to the Astros game to sing the national anthem and throw out the first pitch. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light 
what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, came through through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. A diva is someone who's paid their dues, is worked hard to get to where they are in their career. She, she's a, a woman of God, so that makes her the diva that she is. She knows who she is, you know, and she makes no apologies for it. I don't ever think you get the feeling that you arrive, because what, where, where do you arrive? I haven't arrived until I can have people, or, or when people can say, that music changed my life. It was something that came from a desire in my heart to make music that would touch the lives of people so that their lives won't be so sad or so despondent or so discouraging. Because at the end of the day, God is not gonna ask me how many mansions I lived in. God's not gonna ask me how many Bentleys I drove. He's not gonna ask me, did I own a plane? He's gonna ask me, how many lives did I think I touched? And that's when you arrive, when you know that at the end of the day you can sleep soundly because somebody was blessed by what you did. She's a pioneer because so many people remember her singing as a little girl. And to grow in the spiritual person and the singer that she is now, I would say that she's truly a pioneer. And I take it very seriously to make sure that I am a role model for young people like Kiki Sheard and Trinity 5-7 and Mary Mary so that they'll know that, you know, one day people will be saying these same things about them. Lasting impression I think Yolanda leaves is integrity. I think that she shows everybody that if you do everything above board and everything honestly, then the blessings can't help but come to you and success follows that. Five years I see myself on some island in my home away from everything, just chilling for two weeks and then back home doing the same thing again. <laughs> Women just do it. We, we do the same thing that men do. We, you know, we get in there and we get it done. What do I see in Yolanda's future? Um, I see a clothing designer. I see a producer. I see, I see a whole lot of things for Yolanda. I see the first Christian female gospel billionaire. Sky's the limit. Whatever she wants to do, she's going to do. She's uh, the Renaissance woman. Whatever she wants to do, she will be able to do because she's determined and she's focused and, uh, and she's all about winning. She does not accept failure in any way, shape, or form. The lessons that I've learned that I'd love to share with your audience, uh, number one, keep God first. It's always number one. Number two, have a strong prayer life. Number three, love your family, because family is all you have. Number four, be good to people. Every person you meet, from the janitor to the man on the street, be very aware that God uses everybody, and you never know who you're talking to. And last but not least, live life, love, and have fun. Yolanda would best be remembered for her, her personality, her, her spirituality, she's amazing. Not the awards, not even the broadcast, it's just the impact that her music has made you know, on the lives of believers and non-believers everywhere. She's a world changer. Yolanda has uh, shown me that it's, you don't have to be, quote unquote, you know, in the box as a Christian. You know, your relationship with God is your own. And she's shown me that you can develop your own relationship and it doesn't have to, to fall by any standards of anybody else's relationship with God. As long as you have a personal relationship with God and you walk in that all the time. So uh, if there is anyone out there that expects me to be perfect, oh, where's the camera? I'm sorry, baby, it ain't gonna happen. <laughs> because there's no one, no one is perfect. No one has the perfect life. 
My life is perfect for me simply because this is exactly what I'm supposed to do. And that's the only way that it's perfect. Life is not perfect and you roll with what you have. Whatever, wherever you are, you just roll with it. You make the best of it and you make sure that the day after tomorrow is better than tomorrow. And then the day after that day is better and better and better. So you keep going. Early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs Oh, the last.